Hello, everyone. How, how's everyone doing? Good. How are you doing? Great. Good. I'm doing good. Just watched the short literally two minutes ago. That's actually why I was late. Uh, <laughs> fresh. <laughs> but yeah, it is re really fresh. So thank you for taking the time out of your day. Thank you. As I understand it, Dimitri, you wrote, edited, directed, and composed the film which is the Rainbow Bridge, which is screening at Sundance starting January 22nd at 10 p.m. in the Midnight Shorts program? Yes, I will say. Had a lot of editor help and had a lot of composer help, but yes, still. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I, I'm sure. I, I feel like some of the stuff, especially later on, you, uh, knowing from what I know of just editing basic YouTube videos, <laughs> I would need help. I the don't like, process to sift through that footage. Shout out to Zena Gray, who was able to sift through and be like, look, let me just go through that pass and make sure you have what you need because you know it's there. So let me just organize it in a way. For, for an unorganized person like myself, that was a massive undertaking. <laughs> oh, let me tell you, whenever I do like a new video project, I have an audio folder, a footage folder, a graphics folder, a transcript. Oh, uh, a finals folder, a finals V2 folder, a finals V3 folder. Yep. Final, yeah, you get it. <laughs> Failed job final because Da Vinci decides, ah, I'm not going to work today. But but I guess first things first, to people who aren't familiar with the uh, Rainbow Bridge, how would you describe it? Because I'm having a hard time describing it other than just verbatim reading the log line. I would say it's an ode to the love we have for our, our furry friends. A fantastical ode to them. Yeah, we're definitely using the kind of some of the visual language of 70s and 80s fantasy and sci-fi cinema to tell a story about one woman who's moving through an end-of-life journey with her pet in a very gonzo and silly way. The, the tone, it's a comedy. It deals with some serious topics, but in a really super goofy and fun way that hopefully leaves people with a sense of joy versus- there, there's, a, there's a poster on the wall in the waiting room at the beginning. I, I don't even know if it's visible, but I use it a lot as a way to describe it where it's saying goodbye can be amazing. <laughs> Yeah, but yes, I saw that. Oh, okay, nice. <laughs> when you look, obviously, it's very difficult, whether it's a pet, whether it's someone you love, whether it's anything. But at the same time, there can be a way to make it beautiful and psychedelic. It's something you, like, grow from. And, and hopefully funny. But yes, yeah. like, this is not a drama. I want to make no. that very... That, that is clear from what second... Yeah, okay. <laughs> I don't, like, this might be in the midnight shorts, but don't expect censor from 2021 right. or yes. possessor. Although we love that one. Although that, yeah. yeah. Censor yeah. is so good. I yeah. love that. But yes, it's a very different vibe, although great. If you're expecting that, just take the aesthetics of the end of censor, put it into this short where this lady, Tina, is just trying to, hey, what can we do for my dog? Yeah. Yeah. Just trying to make the most out of the last moments and you find an interesting ad and then you respond to it and then you go and see. Yeah, I thought of it like my backstory is she saw it on like Craigslist or, or that in-universe version of Craigslist, Tina did, and was like, oh, hey, yeah, sure. Th this sounds not shady at all. Let's go to this mall vet with three <laughs> intercoms. It's so uh, funny, the intercom gag in particular, I feel like we, we were like, oh, we need an intercom. And Dimitri and I were looking at some vintage intercoms and we couldn't choose one. We no, there was, like, oh, there's, there was one there was, person who was selling a no, set of three. It wasn't a set. We just bought three of them. Because we liked <laughs> it was them. a lot. And then it was like, oh, it's it developed into a visual gag where it's, oh, there's too many intercoms. What happens when well, there's one for like horses, one, the, for, yeah. one for like humans and one for pets. And yeah. they're all busted, except for the, the lowest one. Yes, of course. <laughs> but it, it, you, you never rip out the old one when you put in the new one. So exactly. I like that you're thinking about Tina's backstory, though, because that's, that's only spot on is what we were thinking at the time. Exactly. We think about it all the time. Yeah, we still do. <laughs> yeah, because it's just it starts there. Right. Like, how did you. I don't know, for lack of a better word, prepare for something like this. I just tried to read the script a lot to try to remember what the words were. And then uh, definitely was trying to think of how to say a lot of this stuff in a way that's like in, in the moment. And uh, yeah, but otherwise, uh, I don't know. I just showed up <laughs> and did my best. 
think I say things a certain way anyway. And I think that's like why they asked me to do this because they like the way I talk or whatever. And uh, yeah. The whole um, package, the whole deal. Yeah. <laughs> it's definitely written for two. Two is like, I hate this and I don't want to do it. We weren't going to cast someone else. It's just, it's built around her. So the character is not too far from her and written in her voice so that's best i could but it was i also forgot about this too how we picked you up from the airport because you had just been working on a job for a couple weeks or i don't know a while in new york so in a way it felt like an extension of tina where like you were just like we picked you up and immediately we're just like okay get to work oh well, yeah <laughs> we're totally. like, easy people yeah, it's funny. Like, yeah. <laughs> yeah bad scientists who are like you we got everything it, figured out you handled it very well but it was overwhelming we kept being like is it you too okay? much <laughs> no it was fine yeah it was funny because one of the lines is i'm not a graphic designer just help me or whatever and then i can't i just came from a graphic design job so i am too i think you mean a graphical designer yeah. right <laughs> it's also an homage to bad graphic design i think that's right. that's one more passion. there's so much graphic design there's yeah. so much graphic design <laughs> yeah it reminds me of when we all first started learning powerpoint in school and we all did the gradient text on everything. Oh, yeah. yeah. I thought it looked fantastic. Thank you. Um, the start of gradient text needs to be brought back, to be honest with you. Yeah. Really cutting edge effects. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but yeah, like my favorite part of it was just to you muttering just random stuff like, hey, is this safe throughout the whole thing? Yeah. It, it feels very natural. But yeah, I, gosh. Was Heather was there. She was like going on like between like level one through 10 the whole time. So uh -huh. I was just like trying to play off of her a lot of times too, because sometimes she would act like indifferent towards my concerns. And then sometimes she would like act distracted or sometimes she would just act like she cared too much. or st So all that kind of helped with the var variating things and playing around and all that. We were so yeah. lucky to work with both James Urbaniak and Heather Lawless, who are like incredible character actors. Like, dude's just, an Oppenheimer. He's yeah, in he's Fables. He's, <laughs> he's, he so, went for, I think his credits go from being directed by Spielberg, Christopher Nolan, and then Dimitri. <laughs> just a couple <laughs> things in between, but still, that is very, that will be endlessly funny to us. But getting to create this framework around Two's very naturalistic performance style with these storied character actors gave it a space for it to feel really organic. And, and hopefully felt yeah. real, too. I think we wanted to add to that surreality of it. Of Okay, Tina is like the only grounded person in this world. Everybody else is so fantastical and silly. But you want to, like, balance that out. You know what I mean? I, yeah. I mission accomplished there, I hope. Yeah. 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 Yeah, I, I forget the character's name, the female doctor. Dr. Bailey Piccadillo? Yeah, Dr. Dr. Bailey Piccadillo. <laughs> when she's like, you dropped your dog? You got to be more careful. I wouldn't drop my dog. But yeah, it, it, it almost feels like watching improv theater it has, was the feeling I got. It's, it's, here's the prompt, go. And here's 15 minutes of unhinged madness <laughs> of a ramping scale. You talked about that one through 10. That's like the scale of madness from minute second 10 to uh, minute 10. <laughs> but, but yeah, Dimitri, you talked about, well, let me back up. So you've done some immersive work before. So first, let me ask, is this your first short? My first short as an adult who either himself or worked with enough people who know what they're doing. But I've done a lot of filmmaking, more experimental in the past with Everything is Terrible and Memory Hole and then most recently with Meow Wolf. So yeah, that's more of an interactive permanent exhibition thing. But still, narrative is still there, all of it, yeah. The, the reason I wanted to ask is I'm curious because Sundance is big on immersive, specifically in the VR space. But what is, in your mind, the the jump or difference between the two art forms. The funny thing is that aside from a lot of technical differences, which there's many, mm -hmm. there's so many similarities. It always overlaps. Like I say this a lot when it comes to illustration, graphic design, music, editing, storytelling, whatever it is, it's all the same. There are so many, I know Tuka can speak to this, Suki can speak to this, a lot of the crew who, who worked on the movie, 
are like multifaceted artists in their own right, which I love. That's my favorite type of artist to work with is somebody who just does a little bit of everything, whatever they feel like. Maybe they're not great at one. Maybe they're better. Who cares? It all weaves into one another. And so this was such a fun challenge of, okay, I've never done anything this specifically this big, this many people on the day, all of that stuff. You have to do all this pre-production. Then there's the day and then you're stuck with that footage. And then what do you have? So all of that is such a major challenge. But at the end of it, there's still a story. There's still what can you relate to as a person? I always think about the audience yeah. for sure, whether it's everything is terrible, whether it's whatever. I just do. I can't help it. There's something to be said about Dimitri's work at Meow Wolf, the Pizza Pals Play Zone, is an immersive narrative that you get the story by reading all of the ephemera that's in the space and watching the videos. Yeah. And the and animatronics. There's, and the... Yeah, an approach to narrative filmmaking where what you're essentially doing is creating an immersive experience on set for those actors to be in yeah. that allows them to like access like a whole other level of character. So it's like every brochure, every form, every poster, everything in there is something that Dimitri made and like crafted in order to tell this story. It has to be real. It has to make sense to you. Otherwise, I don't know. It's just so fun. Really, but beyond that, I hope it also helps tell the story and helps the actors and art team and everybody else, which I think it did. But yeah, I think you said that well. <laughs> yeah, because you keep, and I think it does help because you're going back to set design and stuff like that, do you refer back to it a lot in the short? It's, oh, hey, look at the poster. Oh, I forget the joke. Like pooper or something like that. The older the fondness, the deeper the bondness. <laughs> yes, that one. The, uh, the art department team we got to work with on this, Courtney and Hillary Ann Duhar, who are also filmmakers, and they brought such an insanely talented group of people to bring the rest of Dimitri's vision to life. Yeah, they took where I could only, there's only so much I could do as much as I tried to do and overdo. They were like, got it. We'll take it from here. We're going to work around this and build this beautiful space. That the, the, the thing I would be so afraid of is if like when you're watching a film and you're like, oh, it looks like that set could be torn down in 20 minutes. Or it's just someone's apartment, depending on the story they're trying to tell. But in this case, yeah. I was like, no, everything has to feel like it is 35 years old. There has to be like a smell to it, like a musty kind of old newspaper scent, failures in the air, yeah. the buzzing of esoteric tech, all that stuff. It just has to be. Also, it helps tell the story. The more you build, the more you have in the edit and just at the final product. Of, yeah, look at this. Just no, no, don't worry about this. Look at that. I want to constantly distract you and overwhelm you with information so that you're never... I always want to leave you wanting more. And you're also, it puts the audience in Tina's shoes. Yeah. They're inundated with jargon and imagery. And so That's Tina's the their proxy to move through this world. Totally. Yes, I wish there would be more screening for shorts in like a regular movie theater. I feel like I'd go to things like that, like uh, going going to an animation festival where you see 12 shorts in a sitting. And that's great. It'd be cool to see that kind of anthology style or like a short more shorts programming, et cetera. To yeah, me, I ask was... a question real quick. Did you go to the Cedar Lee to see the animation shorts in Cleveland? Not recently. I went to... A kid in the 90s, did you go? Oh, I would go to those. The, the Spike and Mike's the Cinematheque uh, or whatever. Exactly. Um, All that stuff was like so inspirational when you're a kid. I was like 14. I think I was like even younger when I was going to the Animation Fest. But yeah, I'm just... Reminded of that, of what an important part of like all yeah. our, like upper, we talk about that all the time. I saw all those same touring shows just at the loft in Tucson. In Tucson. But it's just, I don't know, that stuff is so inspirational and right. It's an art, it's a lost art that needs to come back as well. That's another one. Hey, you're good. I, I'm good. The one thing I love about interviews is when I don't have to talk a lot. <laughs> like, talking to the right talking folks. Right. You never shut up. <laughs> but going back what to, uh, to said about zooming in on things, maybe I I don't know if it's even feasible, but if you ever get like a physical or like home media release or something like that, do the old DVD thing of where you went into the bonus features and yeah. had an image oh, gallery. Yeah. Wow, uh, we're, it's funny you say that. We're obsessed with DVD menus; they're incredible. And like all the like yeah. games they would have, but it's so funny because we specifically have really been digging into some of those and also it's it is a shame 
that some of that has been lost with the decline of physical media and like we're big physical media heads. fans heads <laughs> i and i try to buy as many independent film physical releases that happen just because it's, there's not really a space for real quick shout out to agfa, AGFA. shout out to vinegar syndrome mm -hmm. shout out to eureka entertainment yeah, obviously okay. criterion all them but like those indie ones they're arrow. putting out arrow and they're putting out such good stuff all those companies and it even takes me a minute to forget like even i'll forget and then pick one up and just be like oh. we're also it helps that we're friends with the agfa team and bleeding skull oh my god bleeding, bleeding skull. skull check out bleeding skull best. They put so much love and care into their DVDs and out Blu-rays. And I'm just glad there is an audience for it, but there needs to be a bigger one because, and I think there is one. It just needs to be presented to folks. That's yeah. the thing. Yeah. I, yeah. I People want it. It's just that there aren't stores. There aren't, it's harder to find that stuff. So then people think it doesn't exist. And now all these stores are like canceling physical media in general. It's a yeah. real shit. If we did a physical release of this, you bet there's going to be an image gallery. <laughs> you bet there's going to be a game. A game, yeah. yes. We'll, we'll make a game. So like Idle State. Yeah. Maybe have Mimu be like the bouncing DVD screensaver. Right. Wow. <laughs> um, cool we could so just nice make one. those and put them on the website. I know. Yeah. Sure. Um, and, you know, if you're going through old DVD menus from my childhood that I think yes. are the best DVD menus. Please. Are, okay. Um, I forget which one. It might be Lilo and Stitch 2. Okay. Um, and I don't think you can even buy it anymore because Disney put the kibosh on it after Pixar said it didn't exist. Funny. I'm writing these down so I can look up the DVD menu. A Shark's Tale. Is oh, it? Yeah, Shark's Tale. Finding Nemo. Finding Nemo. Uh, yeah, all the Pixar ones, they actually put in a lot of work into it. The other ones are just so, eh, let's just cram it with clip art or whatever we got going. Like assets from the movie, which again, makes it, so beautiful. So yes, bring back the lost art of, okay, what have we talked about? There's the lost art of gradient text. Gradient text. Physical media, mm -hmm. DVD menus. Yeah. I think there was something else we talked about, but I forgot. I think the feeling of waking <laughs> up and a DVD menu is like still playing and it's like one of the really like loud or abrasive ones. Oh yeah. yeah. Sometimes of, if I heard them now, I think I'd be- <laughs> Requiem for a Dream was the most intense. <laughs> that Wonder like Shows song. Them. Yeah. Had a great one. yeah, that one. But Wonder <laughs> Chosen had one of the best ever. Uh, that one was incredible. Just like maddening. We were inspired by that with Everything is Terrible to this day with our DVD menus. I will say, I think that DVDs. Everything is Terrible DVD menus are like a crime. They're so insane. They're punishing. They're punishing. Yeah. It's brilliant. Yeah. But I'm just like, you guys. <laughs> if I have to look at Helvetica one more time. But yeah, like. The Buzz Lightyear one specifically, I would check out because it's got like trivia and stuff like that. That's great. You wrote it down. Really? Right on my list. And then the cool thing is with DVDs, you'd boot it up in here. Coming soon. To oh, theaters. yeah. Yeah. That like and the, with the, the little color. twinkle and everything. Yep. That like purple and coming soon to the attack. Yeah, that's even better. <laughs> I missed the FBI warning, not <laughs> duplicate or you're going to print. Or download a car. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I would download a fun fact. The music in that commercial was stolen and they the guy sued. How funny is that? They I'm gonna tell my mom that because we use that as a joke. Like, oh, would you yeah. download a if <laughs> no one was hurt in the taking of a car? Yes, I think the people oh. make money selling cars. I know, <laughs> yeah, think about Chevy, they might lose two dollars. But so, getting back to Sundance, let's see. Gosh, what are you so after the Sundance? I know that's a crazy thing to even think about because I have slam dance at the same time. So I know how crazy it is, but what happened? What, what after Sundance are you going to do for rainbow bridge? I mean, we talked about home media, like maybe just like a DVD menu kind of thing. We'll do a festival run. Hopefully we'll play a handful of more festivals so we can get the film seen by other people who make movies. And we have a feature version that we'd love to make. We're definitely not finished with these characters. No, definitely not. But honestly, the thing I'm looking forward to the most is a ton of folks from the crew that I haven't seen since the shoot, including just some like over a dozen of us. It's crazy. I just love it that it's going to be like a reunion that I'm just like, Oh, I'm just glad we got into this so that if nothing else, we don't hang out again. Yeah, like uh, more, more to come. There'll be more announcements soon, I think, coming up for some very exciting fests. So we just can't wait to do more of these. It's so fun. Yeah. Once you get past the sleep deprivation and the exhaustion in, in your voice at the end of the day. Oh, yeah. What's that? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're she's done slam dance, but two and I've never no, none of us have ever done Sundance proper. So we're all um, 
uh, preparing ourselves. It's going to be great. We love festivals. No, it's all these big parties, and then you want to like sleep for a but year. But preparing ourselves in the pacing of it all, because you can get exhausted pretty quickly. So oh, yeah. Anyway. Yeah, my general tips, only three movies a day, or they start blurring together. Because on that third one, you're really getting festival brain, where you're like, yes. what movie did I even just watch? Lots of water, like lots. Like what if you don't uh, drink water, you're gone. Your voice is gone by noon. Yeah. Yep, yep. And then just hang out. Parties. Go to the parties. Done and done. We can do it. Okay. <laughs> be hydrated and we're going to be hanging out. <laughs> oh, and food. Obviously food. We will also eat. Hopefully free food. <laughs> um, but I want to thank all, all of you for coming on. Uh, I know it's been a crazy day um, full of interviews. So thank you for taking the time at the end of it to hang out yeah. and talk about DVD menus, physical yeah. media. Yeah. All this crazy stuff. It was but a pleasure. I, I'm glad we got to meet you. It's yeah, been time chatting. You're going to be there? No, unfortunately. Slam. If I wasn't doing slam dance, I could make a thing of, oh, I'll just do both or do one or the other. But Yeah, it's too hard. It's too much. Yeah, I can't go across the street 30 times a day. Yeah. Yeah, that's cold in Park City. Absolutely not. <laughs> Bring coats. Oh, that's the other thing. Bring coats. We have nice- like the puffy... Ones that will look ridiculous, but yeah. I hope you, all of you enjoy De- Sundance and you, you, that you get huge reactions from it. Can't wait to see the feature version and the inevitable Mimu dancing across my screen. <laughs> thank you so much. Oh, thank you, Austin. Yeah, thank you. 